Organic forms are notoriously difficult to achieve in Revit, which tends to favor more traditional building topologies. In comparison, you can create much more complex shapes with much less effort in Rhino. Rhino Insight allows for these complex shapes to be much more accessible in Revit. To introduce myself, my name is Joshua Stellini. I am an architect, BIM manager, and computational designer with nearly 10 years of industry experience, working on large-scale architectural projects all across the world. To download the template files for this lesson, you can sign up for a free account on our website, thedifferentdesign.com, and follow the link below. In the example Rhino file for this chapter, you will find a surface, which will form the basis of our organic pavilion structure in Revit. Now, we could just plug this surface into a direct shape if we wanted to transfer it quickly and easily. And this is exactly how the entourage has been brought in. This results in an organic form, but does not allow much flexibility in Revit. Instead, in this example, we are going to panelize this surface and recreate it in Revit with native Revit geometry. We will do this using adaptive components and beams. So let's first talk a bit about beams in Revit. Beams are what we call line-based components. In Revit, they are drawn by specifying a start and an end point. However, to create them in Rhino Inside, we need to provide linear curves. So let's start to process our surface into a series of lines using Grasshopper. To do this, we are going to simply divide the surface using divide domain and isotrim components. The isotrim component requires a surface, which we already have referenced from Rhino here. For the domain input, we will use the one created by the divide domain component and add some sliders for the U and the V count so that we can control the segmentation of this surface later. Right now we have rectangles, however in this instance I want the pavilion to be made from triangles. This will ensure that they are all planar. To do that, I will deconstruct these faces and reconstruct them as triangles and join it all back up into one brep. First, let's use a deconstruct brep component to extract the vertices of the panels. Because each panel is a square, we need all four points, which we can access with a list item component. Expanding it by clicking on the plus icon will reveal the indexes 0, 1, two, and three. These represent the four corners of our panels. Next, let's drop in a four point surface component. We will provide three of these points as corners to form a triangular surface. This will create one half of what we need. To get the opposite triangles, let's use another four point surface component. This time, we will need to feed in a different set of indices. In Rhino, we can see that we now have both triangle portions created. So the last step is to use a brep join component, which will join the triangulated panels back into a single brep. So now we have a nice poly surface that has been triangulated. We can now use this as the basis of our Rhino inside workflow. As mentioned earlier, we will need curves for our beams and faces for our panels. Using a final debrep component, we can break this brep back into its component parts. The faces will eventually become our panels in Revit, so let's split them out into a surface container and label them. The edges will be the input for our beams, so again, let's use a container and label them to keep things nice and organized. We'll come back to the faces later, but for now, let's go back to our edges here. These edges will serve as the input curves of our Revit beams. To create a beam, go into the Structure tab and select Add Structural Beam. Looking at the inputs, we can see that there's a curve, type and a reference level. Let's skip over reference level and select a type instead. I'm going to select this one here, which is a C150 beam, which already exists in the model. The final step is to add our lines. Revit will process the command and generate our beams in the Revit model. Selecting one of our objects in Revit, we can see that they are indeed native Revit beam families. And we can modify them in Revit if we want to. 
Okay, so that's already very exciting, but now let's add some panels to this form. If we think about these triangular panels for a second, we can basically describe each one with a series of three points, one at each vertex of the panel. Connecting these, a surface, will result in a planar triangular piece. In Revit, there's no native tool that does this operation by default. Most elements require inputs such as points, curves, or lines. For this exercise, we're going to need to develop a custom family. We need to create a special type of family called an adaptive component family. So let's go ahead and do that. Click File, New, Family. Navigate to the default Revit templates. The template that we want is called Generic Model Adaptive. As I mentioned, adaptive component families are a special type of family in Revit, denoted by the grey background that you see here. In simple terms, they are parametric families that are driven by placement of points, which describe a relationship for geometric elements. We are going to create a very simple one now using three points to match our grasshopper panels. Just know that adaptive components can be made up of any number of points. Firstly, we are going to place three points in our 3D view. These will be the points we use in Grasshopper later to describe the vertices of our triangles. Next, select all of them and in the properties, update them to be placement points adaptive. You'll see they are now numbered one, two, and three. This order is important as it's the order we need to specify in Grasshopper to recreate our panels correctly. So now we have our placement points. However, we don't have any geometry in the family yet. To create the panel face, draw some model lines between each of these points. Make sure that Snap 3D is selected and connect each of the points to form a triangle. The lines are now associated with the placement points and will flex when the points are moved. To create a surface, select the model lines and click Create Form. Cycle through the available geometric outputs by using the spacebar. In our case, we have the option of a flat panel or a 3D extruded triangle. Select the flat face to complete the family. Save this family and load it into the project. We can check that our family is working correctly by clicking three points in the model. These three points will describe our triangle. It is all working as expected. We are going to now use Grasshopper to help us place these panels on our surface parametrically. Back in Grasshopper, under the Component tab, select Add Component Adaptive. This component needs just two things. Firstly, we need to get a list of points. The amount of points required for this component will differ depending on the requirements of the family you are using. In this case, because we created a three-point adaptive component family, we need to provide this component a list of three points which describe the vertices of each panel. These points will describe the X, Y, and Z coordinates of each vertex and will be what we use to place our family. To do this, let's use the deconstruct brep component one last time. The output shows a data tree containing three points for each panel, which is exactly what we need. Next, we need to provide a family type that we want to use. Right click and select the adaptive component family we just created, which can be found under the generic model category. Now let's plug this in. 
Once we do that, Revit will generate the panels for us. Clicking on a panel, we can see that it is indeed a generic model family, which again is native Revit geometry and maximizes compatibility. Upon closer inspection, one thing that's not great is that these panels are actually sitting in the center of these beams. We can actually update this by selecting on a beam and modifying its Z justification parameter. We can also do the same thing parametrically in Grasshopper using the element parameter component. The elements we want to modify are the beams we created earlier. So let's plug the output of the add beams component into the element input. For the parameter name, we will input Z justification, which is the parameter we modified in the properties panel in Revit. Again, remember that the text is case sensitive. This parameter controls where the beam sits in relation to the line it was drawn from. In Revit, we can specify origin, top, center, or bottom in the properties panel. However, in Grasshopper, we need to provide a number value between 0 and 3, which corresponds to the index of the selection in Revit's back end, which is not as intuitive. The one we need in this case is the top justification, which is index 0. If we re-enable the add structural beam component, Revit will process the changes and our model will be updated. Our pavilion is coming along nicely. However, let's use Grasshopper to make it even more interesting by giving these panels a bit of variation in their materiality. Back in Revit, click on any panel and select Edit Family from the ribbon. Select this surface and apply a material parameter to it so that we can control the material properties of each of these. Make sure that the instance parameter is selected and reload the family. We can now modify the material of any panel in the Properties panel. For example, we can make this panel glazed. Of course, we can also use Grasshopper to modify the material of our panels. Let's go back to our adaptive component up here and plug it into an element parameter component. For the parameter input, we need to specify the name of the material parameter that we created within the family. In my case, the name of the parameter is called panel material. Using a panel, we can see that the material is currently set to none. To specify a material, we need to use a material element in Revit. And the easiest way to do this is to go back to the param tab and select a material container from the Revit Elements tab. Right click on the container and select a material. Let's go with glass for now. We can now see that all of our panels are glass, which is great. But again, that's quite an easy thing to do in Revit natively. Let's use Grasshopper to make the pattern a bit more complex. We are going to use a random reduce component to randomly cull some of these panels and modify the material properties of the remaining ones. First, copy the element parameter components and set them off to the side. Now drop in a random reduce component. And specify a reduction amount. Ensure the list of elements is flattened. This will randomly cull panels from our list, leaving us with a random pattern. We are going to use Grasshopper to modify the material properties of the panels highlighted in green here to something opaque so that we have a bit of a mix of solid and transparent materials in our pavilion. This time, instead of using an existing material, let's create a new one in Rhino Inside. There is a Materials tab which contains all the components related to querying, creating, and modifying materials. Find the Add Material node. Using a panel, give the new material a name. 
This will create a new material in Revit, which we can check by going to the Materials menu. However, if we look at the graphics of our new material, we can see that everything is set to the default values, which is not ideal. Of course, we can modify these graphical settings using Revit, but using Rhino Inside will allow us to modify parameters such as the color parametrically. There is another component that allows us to modify the graphics of a material, and it's called the Material Graphics component. The component will allow us to modify the values in the Graphics tab. There are a lot of parameters in this node, but the one we want to focus on right now is the color. Using a swatch, we can specify a color. The component has turned black, indicating that the material settings have been updated in Revit. We can now use this material as the input for our panels. In Revit, we can now see that our elements have been updated. We can see a random assortment of glazed and solid panels. As always, this system is parametric. We can update the material, the randomizer, the input geometry, and the model will all update. Hopefully this gives you a better understanding of how you can bridge the gap between your conceptual designs in Rhino and your realized BIM models in Revit. If you want to keep learning, Check out some of our other tutorials on this Rhino Inside Revit training course available on thedifferentdesign.com and follow the link below.